Uh oh. Uh oh. Mama, with her head stuck. Are you the last one? Hot air's good for something. I don't know what is going on. It looks like the hunchback of Notre Dame. Like, what is going on? Uh-oh. Not a bird bath. Good morning, everybody. Uh, last night did not turn out as good as we had hoped. We blew a water pump on Bob's bagger that uh, I actually love because we can pump that feed right into it real quick. We can put the wagons on like full go, which is kind of my speed. Bob is just here dropping off his other bagger that we typically have, but it was getting used yesterday, but they had a breakdown too. So it's just sounding like hay is the same for everybody, <laughs> something always breaks. We're just switching out the big bagger for the smaller one. And yeah, we're gonna just try doing this again today. Thankfully, no rain, blue sky, clear sky, lots of heat and sun, uh, which also means the hay that's left will be nice and dry for Matt, who's coming to bale for us tomorrow. So lots of excitement with hay. It's gonna be like three or four days of hay. <laughs> as per usual. Now it won't start. Oh my god.
It ain't pretty, but second cut is done. So we did terminate this bag here and tied a knot and then Bob had it so this one would just fall right on to this one. It nicely seals this bag, it kind of does two things. This filled up with gas, so we have a couple of puncture holes to just release that and then we'll tape that up. <laughs> and the boys are hot. Well, a couple things. We have Mama with her head stuck. Okay, back you go. Good. But, guys, uh, I think we're done Lammy. Uh, Are you the last one? Uh, Don't you run away. That's not yours, Mom. I think we might be done. Well, it is fitting that today is day 21. It is exactly three weeks from when this group was due to start lambing. So they were due June 13th. Today is July 4th. Happy July 4th, ironically. Uh, it has been a long day of hay, a uh, long uh -oh. few days, another day tomorrow. But we are done lambing. So there ended up being uh, two, uh -huh. two that lost their lambs. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that, I don't know, maybe aborted or maybe just reabsorbed lambs or maybe it was just a, just they didn't get scanned right. But regardless, we have 101 who lamb, 102 that lamb. This one just finished lambing uh, this afternoon. I could actually hear her. We were on the patio having a drink after a very long day and I could hear her. So I had a feeling something was going on. Um, but I actually didn't think she was going to lamb because her udder didn't look crazy full. But she does have milk, really nice colostrum. Um, I am going to try and feed them a bottle. But first, I did divide the pen. So I'm going to move these ladies when I get a chance. Uh, so I just gave them that pen and water pails so I can actually open this whole pen now for the whole lambing group because there's just too many. Uh, it's getting really warm and I just want to give them lots of room and lots of water. So, uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna do that now and probably call it a night, call it a night cause it's just, it's been a really long day. Good afternoon everyone, another day of hay. Thank goodness we have wind, we have sun, but the hay is still really wet. 
So thankfully we are wrapping it and when you wrap hay, even if it's got a little bit of moisture in it, these bales are probably easily 30 plus percent moisture. Not ideal for dry hay, but when you wrap it, it actually, it keeps them from heating up and the heating up is what really ruins your dry hay. So we've made out really good with uh, just baling it when we have a window wet regardless of the moisture because we wrap it. Uh, there won't be very many, I think we're only sitting at about I don't know, 12 or 13 bales right now. We've got two rows, Mark, ra Mark raked it yesterday afternoon, put two rows into one, so that makes the baler a lot more efficient. He doesn't have to go over so many rows to get the same amount of bales. And it just feeds the baler a little nicer and more even and uniform, so. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting. We're gonna get him done. My wrapper is actually on his way. Everything just kind of worked out this year, which never really happens, so we're pretty, pretty happy. Okay, here's some bales we just started here. We're gonna stack these for Cody. He's gonna come and wrap. It's just nice it, it, when we have them in a pile. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, it's pretty, there's still quite a bit of moisture in this. But the one good thing about this baler, um, I love his baler because he uses all his knives. So when I use this in my TMR, it can get mixed real nice with our feed. So even, this is actually for my, my lambs across the road, but I do use this in my U ration when I need it, sometimes for the dry use, if my feed is a bit rich. So it's nice to have this on hand and it's nice to have this chopped up real nice for that mixer. While, uh, while I'm waiting for my telehandler, because I need to unload the wagon to load the wrapper, um, I did take, I always take a few handfuls. I take a, a sample almost from every wagon of uh, haylage that we did yesterday and the day before. I stir it up as best I can. And Jamie will take this and we will do a feed analysis analysis on it. It is just a preliminary one. It's not one that we're going to actually devote all our rations to. It is just to get an idea of moisture and uh, kind of what we're dealing with when we switch bags because it does take a bit to make a ration once you switch bags. So it's nice to kind of call them a week before and say, hey, I'm going to be switching into this bag. Can you make me just a, prelimin a preliminary ration uh, until we know what this is doing when it's fermented? So what I do is not here. Um, Hold that thought, I need a bag. All right, I don't have bags, but what I do is I cheat and I use my OB gloves, my lambing gloves. Hot air is good for something. Then I just take this haylage and I just take little bits from all throughout the pail. Good cross section of what we just harvested. Okay, there. Now Jamie will bring bags. He's got the actual lab bags. That's probably enough, I would say. And then um, I'll just label it Second Cut Hay, Shepherd Creek Farms, yada yada. And when we cut it open, we should have a good idea of what the hay is doing before we get the actual fermented testing. All right, I am kneaded out there because I think we're ready to wrap. All right, hay is done, wrapped, everything is good, calling for rain maybe even as early as tonight, so oh, the stars aligned. 
which is wonderful. It makes you forget all about the breakdowns and the problems when, uh, when it's all done and off. You can see that glorious view. I've been watching these lambs because it's pretty critical right now because it's so hot outside that it tends to, we have to bed the barn every day just to keep that litter, that top layer really, really dry so their noses aren't right on it because they can pick up bugs. And I noticed this lamb, I don't know what is going on. It looks like the hunchback of Notre Dame. I don't know if it took a reaction to the selenium injection. That's the only thing these guys have ever had or it got its head caught in a gate, or we're dealing with something yet again that I've never seen on this farm. So brace yourselves, it's kind of disturbing. Do you see this lamb? Like, what is going on? I'm not sure if I've ever quite seen something like that before. What's on your, what's on here? So let's see if I can, oh, let me, Oof. it's very, very gushy, like an abscess. So I don't know what that would be. So yeah, my little hunchback lamb. Strange, but I'm gonna take a picture and show my vet. We are about to tag our final two lambs. Very exciting. Hmm. And then we'll have some results. What's in your tail? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not a bird bath. Sorry, buddy. Rip. You just sit here for a bit. Hi, sweetie. Hi. You're free. Clamming is done. I went through all my numbers for this group uh, just on my Gallagher. So I haven't really sat at my computer and really digested what's going on, but I'll give you kind of the overall how the flock did. So here is the lambing results for this group. So 200, 205 lambs out of 102 ewes, which is 2.01 lambs per ewe. So that was born. Um, now I count all my mortality. So if they came out not living, then that's all counted here. Uh, so we had 11 stillborns, which is 5%, two stuck lambs, which is 0.9%, one week, which is 0.5%, and one had watery mouth, which is 0.5%. Now, some of those came out alive and they died really shortly. So they're basically any of them that were either stillborn or came out or died uh, within the first 24 hours of life. That's kind of what I have in these results. All the mortality after 24 hours is in my system, but I kind of accumulate that and figure out what happened at weaning time and we'll talk about that when this group gets weaned here in a couple months after the first 24 hours of mortality 190 lambs are, are were alive uh, which is only 1.86 lambs per you now this group had at least a quarter maybe a third probably uh, 32 out of 102 ewes so whatever that is so like a third it's about a third of the group were ewe lambs, so first time lammers, and they tend to have one uh, as their first, but I had a, a few have twins and, and even triplets. So they're part of, um, so that typically waters down what the mature ewes do, but but there's lots of mature ewes that just gave me one too. So we had 29 singles, 46 sets of twins, 24 sets of triplets, three sets of quads, no quints and no sextuplets this time. Typically when we see a lot of the multiples, it would be in groups that were bred in season. So definitely in that um, fall breeding season, we tend to see those multiples. And you would have saw that in my March group. 2.01 lambs per ewe. I like that number to be a bit bigger only because of that, unfortunately, that little bit of mortality in the first 24 hours. Uh, however, 15, out of 205 all of a sudden doesn't seem as bad it seems always really bad in the moment but i'm feeling a little bit better about it five percent stillborn 
I'd have to look back. Maybe you guys know. Is that the best I've done so far? I feel like I'm going the right way with stillborns. You know what? I might have this. Actually, I might have this on my phone. Oh, I do. I have the last... Okay, so my March group, I just want to see where I was. Okay, so I had 7.5% stillborn. So I was 2.5% better than my March group, which makes me feel really good. However, there was 2.4 lambs per you, so I had way more multiples. So with more multiples, you tend to get more stillborn. So it just kind of goes hand in hand. So I'm feeling pretty good about 5% all of a sudden. I just don't, I just wish they'd all come out alive, but... Anyways, thank you guys for being around for my lambing. It was a lot of fun. Um, my next group is due in September. September is an overlap month, so I'm already losing sleep over it. I will be in the fields with Mark. We lose Jess. We lose Jack. I'm hoping they'll come home on weekends just to help, but I haven't pressured them to do that yet. Um, Carissa is here full time now, so I'm going to really lean on her a lot in this next lambing. However, there's still lots I typically do. I have to keep track of what's going on. Um, so there's only so much I can train, but for that hardcore um, ob ob observing and keeping them fed and keeping them watered and keeping them moving around, Carissa's on, on top for that. So that really takes the pressure off me for sure. Uh, so September will be... I'm, kind of dreading it and I'm kind of looking forward to it. The one saving grace is my last conception, so my April breed wasn't very good. So I actually only have 93 that are due in September. I'm feeling like it, uh, that's a pretty manageable group and they were cedared so they might just come fast and quick in a week like last September which would be nice. Even this group was really fast and furious and I don't mind that because we may have a break in field work so it may actually work. So keep your fingers crossed, guys, and um, send us some good vibes that uh, September will go even better than June. And uh, yeah, pretty happy with that.